Operations on radicals. Okay, we're going to start off with adding and subtracting radicals. And whenever you do this, you have to have identical radicals. So what I mean by that in our first example is that square root 3 and square root 3 are identical. So they have to be the same. It doesn't matter what coefficient is out front, in this case a 4. It just matters what's inside of the radical. So I have 4 square root 3 plus, any time I don't have a coefficient out front, I can put a 1. So 4 square root 3 plus 1 square root 3 would be 5 square root 3. Notice my square root 3 didn't change. This is kind of the same thing as doing 4x plus 1x equals 5x, except instead of x we have a square root 3. Okay, next we have 2 square root 3 minus 9 square root 3. So our square root 3's are the same here. So I can just take 2 minus 9. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So I have negative 7 square root 3. Okay, with our next problem, notice that we don't have the same thing on the insides. If this happens, you can first look to simplify one of your square roots. So Square root 3, there's no way we can simplify that because there's no perfect square that divides 3. But square root 12, there might be a perfect square that divides 12. So, looking at our list of perfect squares, we can say that 12 would fit in right here. 9 doesn't divide 12, but 4 does. So we are going to rewrite square root 12 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 because 4 times 3 is 12. Now make sure you still bring along with it minus 2 square root 3. We don't want to leave that part out. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify this to be 2 square root 3 because the square root of 4 is 2. Bring down two square root, minus 2 square root 3 again. And now we have 2 square root 3 minus 2 square root 3. So 2 times 2 is 0. So this answer is just 0. Don't put 0 square root 3, just like you wouldn't put 0x. Okay, with our next problem, the insides again aren't the same, so we need to simplify one of them. We can't simplify square root 2 because there's no perfect square that divides 2. So we're going to simplify square root of 8. And looking back at our list of perfect squares, 4 again is going to be what we want to use because it divides square root 8. So we have square root 2 plus square root 4 times square root 2 because 4 times 2 is 8. Next we have square root 2 plus square root of 4 is 2 square root 2. Man, we've got a lot of 2's going on in this problem. Okay, now we can go ahead and add these together. So we have 1 square root 2 plus 2 square root 2 we get 3 square root 2. Now we're going to multiply. Whenever we multiply, we're going to multiply the like terms together. So for this first problem, square root 5 times square root 2, 5 and 2 are alike because they're in the same spot. We don't have to have identical radicals like we did whenever we were adding and subtracting. We can just multiply the 5 and the 2 together. So 5 times 2 is 10. Now we need to check to see if we can simplify the square root of 10. Looking at our list of perfect squares, 10 would fit in right here behind 9. 9 doesn't divide 10, and neither does 4. So, none of our perfect squares divide 10. We're just done. Next, we have 5 square root 6 times square root 3. Anytime you don't have a number in front of your square root, you can just put a 1. So now, my like terms that I'm going to multiply together are going to be the 6 and the 3. And then also... You probably guessed it, the 5 and the 1. So let's start with the 5 and the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, and then 6 times 3 is 18. Looking back at our list of perfect squares, it looks like 9 is going to be the only one that divides 18. So we're going to rewrite this, bring the 5 down, as square root 9 times square root of 2, because 9 times 2 is 18. So this looks exactly like what we did in the last concept, except I have this 5 floating around outside. We'll deal with it very last. 
Next, we're going to simplify square root 9. So we have 3 instead of the square root 9. And the last step we're going to do 5 times 3, which is 15. So all that 5 out front does is it gets multiplied at the very end. Okay, next problem. Again, our like terms are going to be the 3 and the 5 and the 2 and the 10. So now we need to simplify the square root of 20 if, if possible. Looking up at our list, it looks like 4 is going to be what divides 20. So we have 15 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 because 4 times 5 is 20. If we simplify square root 4, we get 2. And 2 times 15 is 30. There is our final answer. Okay, now we're going to talk about squaring radicals. Squaring a square root just undoes it. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. Um, and instead of using numbers, I'm going to use a smiley face. I always like to use a smiley face for this example. So if we take the square root of a smiley face and we multiply it by the same thing, a square root of a smiley face, we just get out the smiley face. So we just get out whatever was inside of both those radicals. So with numbers, that would look like the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 would equal 5. Okay, so with my first example, I have 5 square root 6 squared. Now anytime we're squaring something like this, we have to square everything on the inside. So we're going to square the 5 and we're going to square the square root 6. So that looks like this. 5 squared times square root 6 squared. 5 squared is 25. And 6 squared would just be 6 because the square and the square root undo each other. They cancel out. And last we have 25 times 6, which is 150. For the next problem, we're going to have 2 squared times square root 3 squared. 2 squared is 4. Square root 3 squared is just 3 because, remember, square root and a square undo each other. And 4 times 3 is 12. Notice I didn't have any square roots left in these problems at the end. Since we're squaring this, our square roots are going to go away. You should never have a square root left in a problem that looks like this. Okay, pause your video, try your independent practice problems, and then restart for my answers.